Welcome to the introduction to Ayurvedic Health 101. My name is Midori Simovic and I will be your instructor today. Today's topic is Ayurveda and TCM and I will talk about the similarity and the difference between the two. Ayurveda and traditional Chinese medicine share many similarities in their characteristics of their origins and histories, philosophies and principles, concepts and methodologies, as well as political and cultural environments. Both Ayurveda and TCM originates in the cultures of river people who lived more than a few millennia ago. It is believed that Ayurveda emerged from the Vedic belief system along the river Indus over 4,000 years ago, while TCM emerged from the shamanistic belief, a precursor to Taoism along the Yellow River over 3,000 years ago. Due to the lack of concrete evidence, there are various arguments as to how old these two systems have been practiced. However, it is general consensus that Ayurveda and TCM have been practiced at least more than 2,000 years based on the earliest written texts. The earliest Ayurvedic treatise called Charaka Samhita is thought to be compiled around 150 BCE and the oldest TCM canon called Huandi Neijing was compiled around 200 BCE. Again, that the both written texts are believed to be compiled by mythical or legendary characters who were believed to have lived in much earlier time presents arguments about the year of compilation. According to the book Ayurvedic Medicine by Sebastian Paul, Ayurveda integrated the knowledge and experience of ascetics and Buddhism while adhering to Hinduism as its primary reference point. TCM was influenced by the Taoism and the Buddhism. The both principles are based on their respective traditional philosophies which embraces the concept of subtle energies and the principles of five elements. Ayurveda is primarily based on the six Vedic philosophies. Ayurveda also developed alongside the tantric and yogic tradition, influencing each other. Much of the philosophy of TCM derives from the Taoist and the Buddhist thought and is based on the classical Chinese belief that the life and activity of individuals are interrelated with the environment on all levels. Ayurveda and TCM both share the concepts and the methodologies with traditional martial arts. The ancient Indian martial art called Kalalipayattu employs the knowledge of mama points chakra toning meditation system and herbal treatments similar to Ayurveda. The practice of Tao Yin, the precursor to Tai Chi, is similar to meditative energy exercises called Qigong. Both Tai Chi and Qigong system shares the knowledge of subtle energies and Yin Yang theory with TCM. Under the British occupation, India began to establish hospitals and organize statewide healthcare institutions which excluded Ayurveda. TCM underwent a period of extreme hardship during the Cultural Revolution. From 1966 to 1976, traditional doctors were purged from schools, hospitals and clinics and many of the old practitioners were jailed or killed. In the early 20th century, Ayurvedic physicians began to organize professional associations to promote the national recognition and funding. With 1947 independence from Britain came the revival of Ayurveda and it regained the national status. 
With Mao's death in 1976, the Cultural Revolution officially ended, and the TCM, along with other traditional cultures and academics, slowly began to resurface in China. Today, over 100 colleges offer degrees in traditional Ayurvedic medicine in India, and Ayurveda is recognized and supported by Indian government, who oversees the standard and quality of the academics and the practices throughout the nation. In India, nearly 80% of people use Ayurvedic medicine alone or in combination with Western medicine. According to the 2007 National Health Interview Survey, more than 200,000 U.S. adults had used Ayurvedic medicine in the previous year. In recent years, medicine in China has been focusing on integrating East and West. According to the 1991 Chinese Health Statistical Digest, The number of doctors practicing TCM rose from 27,600 in 1949 to 362,600 in 1991. And hospital beds available for TCM increased from 220 to 188,200. A blend of TCM Western and integrated medicine has emerged, allowing patients better health care choices than any one of the system alone. It was estimated in 1997 that some 10,000 practitioners served more than a million patients each year. According to the 2007 National Health Interview Survey, An estimated 3.1 million U.S. adults had used acupuncture in the previous year. According to the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, there are currently more than 150 undergraduate and 30 postgraduate colleges for Ayurvedic medicine in India. Students can earn either a bachelor's degree or doctoral degree in, the, in India. However, there is no national standard for training or certifying Ayurvedic practitioners in the U.S., although a few states have approved Ayurvedic schools as educational institutions. As for TCM, most states license acupuncture in the U.S. While states vary in their inclusion of other TCM components, the federal government accredits schools that teach acupuncture and TCM. Ayurveda, as of now, has not been as successful as TCM in establishing political status in the U.S. The difference between the current status of the two may be. Due to the level of support given by the original governments, existence of viable research reports, and availability of translated reading resources. In the 21st century, there are much left to be done by both the contemporary medicine and the traditional medicine for the true integration of the best of both. However, as the contemporary medicine begin to open up their eyes towards What traditional medicine had known for past few thousand years, and the traditional medicine beginning to learn the modern technologies, a bright future awaits for both the providers and recipients of health industries. <laughs>